hi everyone welcome again continuing our discussion on the service registry and service discovery in this video we will see how can we use apache zookeeper as a service registry solution apache zookeeper is a very popular framework that is used in many different problems like leader election consensus problem distributed configuration distributed locking and so on and in this video we will use zookeeper to implement a discovery service and for that along with apache zookeeper we will use spring cloud zookeeper which is a project under spring cloud umbrella and this particular project which focuses on apache zookeeper integration simplifies so many things through auto configuration and other spring abstractions so let's quickly see what we are going to cover in this video we will start a zookeeper instance we will run a zookeeper instance on our local machine and then we'll create simple spring boot apis which will register themselves with this zookeeper instance so for example if we have two instances of the same service running and then there is another service with a single instance and when they communicate with this zookeeper instance the zookeeper will have the registry information so for example here we have two instances of the same service which is service one and instance one a single instance of service two so let's get started the first step is to install the zookeeper to run the zookeeper instance on our local system to do that we'll use docker desktop if you don't know what is docker desktop or you don't have one on your system then please watch this video as a reference where we discuss how to install docker desktop so i'll open my docker desktop and here to run zookeeper as a docker container we simply need to search zookeeper image and here you can see this is the docker official image for zookeeper and now we have two options pull and run pull will simply pull the image and run will pull the image and run a docker container out of it so i'm going to hit run to run the zookeeper as a docker container let's name it zookeeper discovery and now we need to bind the ports from the local system to this docker container in order to communicate with this docker container so I'm going to use the same ports 8080 and hit run. This will download the zookeeper image from the docker registry and then it will start a new docker container for zookeeper. So we see this docker container is up now and it is running on local host with this port 2181. Now that we have this zookeeper instance running on the system let's go back and create a spring boot API. To do that, we'll go back to the Spring Initializer. It will be a Maven project with Spring Boot 3. I'll change the group. And Artifact. So let's name it Zookeeper Client. We'll change the package name. And now we need to add the dependencies. Because this is going to be a microservice, so first we need to add the web dependency. And second, we need to search for Zookeeper. And here you can see we have two options, Zookeeper Configuration and Zookeeper Discovery. As I said, Zookeeper is used to solve many different problems. And one of them is to handle the problem of distributed configuration. Because in this video, we are going to focus on the discovery only. So we need to add this dependency. Generate the project. The project has now been downloaded and I'm going to open it with IntelliJ. Let's give it a minute while it auto configures everything. So the setup is now complete. It has downloaded all the required dependencies. Let's quickly scan the pom.xml. And here we have the required dependencies starter web and zookeeper discovery coming from the Spring Cloud. As I said, this is going to be a simple microservice. So let's add a controller as well. And in this one, we'll add a simple controller to test the API. We need to add the annotation at the rate rest controller. And then we'll add a simple method. Which will return a hard-coded string type. And add the get mapping annotation. To support the get calls all right so this simple api is almost ready the next thing is how do we establish a connection from this api to the zookeeper the good thing is we don't need to do anything in this particular case because spring boot will handle everything via auto configuration and to understand that we'll go back to the spring documentation and 
here you can see in the registering with zookeeper section that by default if we have added the correct zookeeper dependencies in the project spring boot will auto configure the project and that service when it's up will look for the zookeeper instance running on this address which is localhost colon 2181 so if we have not changed the address or the port then we don't need to provide this explicitly and in this case if we go back to the docker desktop we see that we have the zookeeper running on the localhost and on the same port and that's why we don't need to provide this address but if the host is changed or we are using a different port then we need to provide this configuration in the application.yml so in a nutshell we don't need to provide this connection string so let's go back to the api and we'll go back to the application.properties there is one thing that we will provide which is server port and we'll set it to zero because we want spring boot to assign a random port when we start multiple instances of the same api and the second thing will provide this application a valid name spring.application.name and let's name it service one colon and a random value so what we are saying when we start the multiple instances of this api we don't want multiple instances to override the existing name and that's why we are providing a distinct name and that's why we are inserting this random value so that each instance of this api or this service will have a distinct name and it will register itself with the zookeeper discovery with that name only all right so everything is set up now and let's start the application So the service is up now and it has been assigned a random port 55239 and if we verify the logs we see it was able to connect to the zookeeper which is running on localhost 2181 all right so it successfully registered itself with the zookeeper and to verify that api is working we can hit this api using this port and if we hit enter we see hi there that means this api is running now let's try to run another instance of the same service and we'll see how it registers itself with the zookeeper discovery to run another instance we can try running the same application okay so it says this application is not allowed to run in parallel okay what we need to do is in this case we need to clone the existing configuration and run it again let's do that So this will now start another instance of the same service and notice that the new instance has been assigned a different port which is also random 55354 the first instance had this port 55239 and we can verify that the second instance is also running we can use this port hit enter and we see the same output so that means both the instances are now up and running and both the instances were able to register themselves with the zookeeper instance and we can verify the same thing here as well we can see some activities going on in the zookeeper logs all right so we started two instances how do we query zookeeper discovery to fetch some data about the registered instances and services to do that let's stop the instances first and we'll go to the controller to do that we can use the same discovery client which we did with the spring netflix eureka private discovery client and notice that this discovery client is coming from the spring cloud and that's the benefit of using spring abstraction because in this case when we are using discovery client spring boot will auto configure this client according to the zookeeper while in the previous video when we were using spring netflix eureka it configured the discovery client for spring netflix eureka and since this client has been configured by the spring boot so we simply need to auto wire it like this and once we have the access to this discovery client we can use this discovery client to find the information of the registered instances so for this one if we try to fetch all the services registered with the zookeeper we can call the method get services which returns a list and we can simply get it printed like this all right so when the service is up and we call this controller it will 
print all the services registered with the zookeeper discovery okay so let's start both the instances now this is the instance one instance two so the instance one is up on this port and instance two is also up and we can use any of these to test the api so let's pick this one we'll go to the browser and change the port hit enter we see the output as high and if we check the console we should see the services okay so here we see a single value but we don't see a random number it means we did something wrong in the application.properties and here we are appending the random number oh yes it should be dot and that's why it's not generating a random number and we see a single value instead of two instances so let me correct this one and restart the services we'll stop both the instances and let's start them again so instance one and instance two so this instance is up let's check the another one this is also up and this time let's copy the port go to the browser we'll change the port hit enter and let's check the logs and this time we see two values that means two instances with this random number for this service one so we can see both the instances register themselves with the zookeeper discovery and if we query the discovery service we can see both the instances here and similarly another service or another client can access the zookeeper discovery to find the information about different services and their instances in this video we have not covered how to call these services in a load balanced way as a client which we will see in later videos that's all for now in this video we implemented a discovery service using zookeeper see you in the next video thanks for watching